before I start this video, I want to ask you to support me by subscribing to my channel. And please like this video if you find it helpful. And of course, if you have some questions or suggestions, welcome to the comments. And we jump right in. Hi everyone! The past few months have been really busy, but now I am back with you again. There will be lots of new helpful videos. So, today's video topic will be about multilingualism. Symphony provides a powerful translation component that makes it easy to handle translation in your application. First, let's install the translator using this command. After installing the bundle, a default configuration file should have appeared. Let's find it and take a look at how the settings are defined there. The default local is set to N, which means English is the default language for translations. The translator configuration specifies the default path for translation files. It issues this path, which usually represents the project's root directory followed by the translations directory. Translation files are typically stored in this directory. The fallback section indicates the fallback locals for translations. In this case, the fallback local is also set to N, meaning that if a translation is missing for a specific language, it will fall back to the English translation. Symphony Translation Bundle uses translation files to store the translation for different languages. These files can be written in YML, uh, XLIF, PHP or some else formats. Actually, for simpler projects, it is recommended to use YML as a format for translation files. However, if you are working with specialized translation programs or teams, it is advisable to use XLIF. You'll place your translation files in the designated directory, usually translations, and organize them into domains. The file name of the translation files in Symfony is significant and should follow a specific na naming convention. Each translation file must be named according to the following path structure. Domain, Local, Loader. Let's break down the components of the file name. Domain. The translation domain represents a logical grouping or context for translations. It helps organize translation based on their purpose or area of the application. Example of domains could be messengers, validators, forms, and so on. The domain name should be descriptive and indicate the purpose of the translation stored in the file. Local. The local component specifies the language and regional variant for which the translations are intended. It represents the target language or audience for the translations. Uh, for example, n_gb 
represents British English, while N represents General English. Locals are typically represented using language tags following the BCP 47 standard. Loader The loader indicates how Symfony should load and parse the translation file. It specifies the format of the file such as YML, XLIF, PHP or else. The loader name should match the registered loader for that specific format in the Symfony framework. Putting it all together, a translation file for the messenger's domain in British English using the YML format would typically have a file name like this. This naming convention ensures that Symfony can identify and load the appropriate translation files based on the translation domain, local and loader, making it easier to manage and organize translation for different languages and contexts within your Symfony application. Let's move on to practice. Each translation file contains k-value pairs, where the case represents the original strings and the values contain the translations in different languages. When it comes to translating contents in templates, Symfony provides native support for both Twig and PHP templates. In Twig templates you can use built-in filters to perform translations. Here is an example. This is the translation K. It represents the message or string that you want to translate. The trans filter is used to translate the message. It accepts two parameters. Uh, the first parameter is an empty array, which can be used to pass any additional parameters to the translation. And the second parameter is the translation domain. In this case, the translation domain is set to main page. The raw filter is used to output the translated string without escaping any HTML entities. It is used when the translated string contains HTML or other markup that needs to be rendered as is. And some more theory. When using the trans method or the trans tweak filter, Symfony follows the following process to translate messages determining the local. Symfony first determines the local of the current user. This is typically stored in the request object and can be set via the underlying local attribute on your roads. The local represents the desired language for the translation. Loading translations. Symfony loads a catalog of translated messages specific to the determined local. 
The translations are loaded from the translation resources defined for that local. Additionally, if the message is not found in the current uh, locals catalog, Symfony also loads messages from the fallback local. This ensures the translations from the fallback local are available if they don't already exist in the current locals catalog. The end result is a comprehensive dictionary of translations. Translating the message. If the desired message is found in the translation catalog, Symfony returns the corresponding translation. However, if the message is not located in the catalog, the translator falls back to returning the original message itself. Based on the above, we need to add the local attribute to our roads. Instead of repeating the same road configuration for every action method within the controller, we will define common attributes at the class level using the road attribute. As you can see in the local attribute, I also added a restriction on supported locals. By the way, this configuration still needs to be defined in the services.yml file. Also, let's make a redirect from the root road to a page with the English local. To work with multilingual functionality, we need to install the Intel extension. It is an essential component for supporting localization and handling text in different languages within PHP applications. It provides powerful and flexible tools for working with international data and localization, which is particularly useful when developing multilingual and international applications. So, I need to make some additional changes to the Docker file. In this updated Docker file, I have combined the installation commands for libqdev and other packages into a single command. Here it. This will ensure that all necessary dependencies for the Intel extension are installed correctly. Then I moved this command below to ensure that it is executed after the installation of libq dev dependencies. Mm -hmm. 
Now it is necessary to rebuild the container and then we can test how the translations work. Let's also add a language switcher in HTML for users. To save your time, I have prepared the language switcher in advance. It is a simple bootstrap drop-down menu. Here, pass is a tweak function provided by Symfony for generated URLs. It takes the road name and the road parameters as arguments. In this case, the road name is obtained from this part of um, expression, and the road parameters are obtained from this part of expression and merged with the local parameter. The resulting URL will be generated with the current road name and the merged road parameters, including the added local parameter with the value n. This allows you to generate a URL that points to the current road with a specified language parameter. Let's check how it works. I forgot to connect bootstrap.js file and because of that uh, there was the problem with drop-down menu. Um, I'll need to connect it uh, via webpack in future. So, this is the first introductory video from the translation series, which will help you understand how it all works and how to work with translations. There are more questions on this topic that I want to introduce you to, but we'll save them for the next videos. And that's all for today. Thanks for watching. I hope you enjoy this video and see you next time.